In this three steps to sketch, we're going to use our advanced method for sign graphs so that we can sketch a sign equation that has both a phase shift and a vertical shift. We'll look at y equals four sine of one half x plus pi over four plus one. So before we jump into the method, let's go ahead and factor out our b term, that one half in front of the x, just so we can clearly see the phase shift as we look at our equation. All right, so we know the four sine stays the same. We factor out one half. That leaves us with x plus pi over two. Okay, distribute that one half back through mentally just to double check that you've factored out correctly. Um, and it looks like we're good here. And then of course we still have the plus one. So the great thing about doing this before you get started with your three steps to sketch method is that you can now really easily see both of your shifts. We can see our phase shift is happening in here. We have a shift left pi over two. Remember that plus means it's minus negative pi over two. Um, and then we also see our vertical shift of up one over here. A pretty common mistake is to keep the equation like this but then to say the phase shift is just the C term, this pi over four. Um, so sometimes people will say, oh, it's a phase shift, we should go left pi over four. Um, and that's why I like factoring out the B term. It just helps prevent that error. It helps you because you get to look straight at your equation and see that phase shift more easily. Of course, you can keep it in the original form if that works for you. Um, but if you are prone to that error, I definitely suggest factoring out B. All right, so let's go to our method. So we have our outline on the left, and here is the equation with the B term factored out and a grid. So to get started, let's remind ourselves the general form for a shifted sine equation. It's A sine B and it's x minus c, let's go ahead and show it x minus c over b. Okay, that's just with b factored out, plus d. And that'll really help us when we start identifying all of our information and breaking it down. Okay, so jump in. Step one is to find our essential information. This is where we analyze and get organized so that the actual graphing is very easy. Um, so first we'll work on our base graph and our scale labels. Okay, so this will be used to plot the base pattern in step two. Okay, we can clearly see A is the coefficient in front of sine. So A is four. And this tells us the amplitude of our graph. So it's a vertical stretch. Um, normally the parent sine graph, its amplitude is one, um, but here it's four. So from midline to maximum or midline to minimum, the length will be four units. All right, and then we have B. So B is this one half here that we factored out. And what this tells us, well, a couple things. It tells us first, how many cycles of our graph will happen between zero and two pi. So half of a cycle, and that's just helpful to know up front. Kind of gives you an idea of what to expect your graph to look like. Um, and it also helps us calculate the period. And so to do that for a sine graph, we take two pi and divide by B. So two pi, Divided by one half is the same thing as multiplying times two over one. Okay, so of course that means our period is going to be four pi. And period, remember, is just the length of one horizontal cycle. Um, so that's consistent with what we already said about B and that half a cycle should happen between zero and two pi, and then a full cycle is happening in four pi. All right, so now we can select our scale labels. This is how we'll label both our axes. And with our method, this three steps to sketch method, we're very intentional about choosing how we label our horizontal axis. You should take your period and divide by four. Okay, so four pi divided by four. We'll count by units of pi when we label our horizontal axis. And what this does is it ensures when we're plotting our base pattern in step two, it ensures that each of our key points aligns nicely with our horizontal uh, labeled tick marks. This makes for a really nice, neat graph, and it also just makes it easier on us as we're graphing. All right, so we have our horizontal tick marks and our vertical tick marks. 
usually one works really well. If you wanted to use four here, you could, um, but I think one is nice because it will really show that vertical stretch, that amplitude of four. Okay, so let's go ahead and label our axes. So horizontal first, we're counting by pi. So it's almost like counting, like you learned in probably kindergarten number four. One pi, two pi, three pi, four pi, five pi, six pi, oops, seven pi, and eight pi. Okay, and we'll do that in the other direction. I'm going to hit pause. So if you're graphing along, you might wanna pause. Um, it'll be the same on the negative side of the horizontal axis, of course, just with negative signs. Okay, so we have our horizontal axis labeled. Um, one quick note on that, for the base pattern in the next step, you'll notice that this fourth horizontal tick mark to the right of the origin matches the period. And with this setup, with this method of choosing our horizontal scale labels, taking the period and dividing by four, it should make sense that that should always match. Um, but it's a nice thing to double check. All right, so we have that and let's label our vertical axis, just counting by one. All right, got negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four and negative five. Great. All right, so our last big thing for our essential information is to identify our shifts. And because we calculated or we factored out B, it's very easy to see that phase shift. We talked about that earlier. So our phase shift is happening in here with X. And take a look at the general form. We see it's X minus C over B. Um, so remember that's like X minus negative pi over two. So negative pi over two is our phase shift or our horizontal shift. And if it helps you to write that that's left, um, you can do that. Now, of course, you could have not factored out the B term as long as you were very, very cautious and you found your phase shift by taking C and dividing by B. That would work as well. All right, and then finally, D is that last plus one out there. And we will do exactly that. We'll shift vertically plus one or up one. And so we'll do those in our third step, but it's nice to go ahead and have them while we're organizing everything else. It's nice to have these written down as well. Okay, so now we're on to step two, which is to plot the base pattern. Um, before we jump into that, remember that we are lightly plotting this. This is our base pattern. It's not our final graph. We'll, we'll have to apply the shifts in step three. Um, so use a different color. I'll use, um, I'll use light blue here to plot this base pattern, but just make a note if you're using your pencil, um, light is key here. All right, the second thing is to recall our base sign pattern. And we know that there was no negative out in front of the sign. So we know that this is an unreflected sign pattern. So that pattern goes zero starting at the origin. So zero, maximum, another zero, minimum. All right, so we're ready to jump in. So lightly plot a point on the origin. That's our first zero. Our maximum will happen at the first horizontal tick mark to the right, so at pi. And to get the y coordinate, just look back to a. It'll be four. It'll be whatever your y, whatever your a value is for the y coordinate. All right, then you'll have another zero at the next horizontal tick mark, so at two pi. And then you'll have a minimum at three pi and the y coordinate will simply be the opposite value of a, so negative four in this case. All right, and then let's put another zero on four pi. That will be the start of the next cycle, but it's nice to see that to just visually close out our first um, cycle. All right, so that's all there is to plotting the base pattern, and we can move into step three, which is to shift, sketch, and repeat. So here I'm going to switch to green, and this will be my first cycle of my final graph. And we'll be looking at these shifts that we identified in step one. And we can actually do both of them at the same time. We'll be working from our light blue points or from our lightly marked points of our base pattern from step two. So let's start with the point on the origin. And like I said, we can do both of these at the same time. We're going to move left pi over two, which we know is half a horizontal grid unit. Um, because we marked them in terms of pi. And then we'll move up one, which will be one vertical grid unit. Okay, so take each point. We'll start the origin. We'll move left 
by pi over two and up one. Okay, just showed it once there. And so that's what we're going to do with each of our base pattern points. So left half a horizontal grid unit and up a full vertical one. All right, left pi over two, up one. Left pi over two, up one. And left pi over two, up one. So notice what were originally zeros in the base pattern have now shifted up one. When you have a vertical shift, those zeros no longer are zeros. I like to call these now midline points um, because we know our midline of our sine curve is going to be at the line y equals one. So let's sketch this in. Let's see it really nicely. Here's one cycle of our graph. And again, here's that midline y equals one. I won't keep that on there, but it is just nice to see that kind of centers the graph. You see that, um, that symmetry there. All right, so now we'll move from this cycle and we will repeat it. And so we'll have, we'll have room to sketch quite a few more cycles on here. So let's back that midline off and we'll repeat the pattern. So we have our midline point here. Okay. We'll have a maximum. Notice that it's a period away from the first maximum. We have another midline point, another minimum. Oops, sometimes that happens. Just erase and plot it right there. Make sure it gets on the midline. So see everything is nice and equal here. Draw it a little bit neater. This is the second cycle of our graph. All right, and we can work to the left as well. So we'll work the pattern backward. We'll have a minimum, happens at negative three. A midline point, a maximum, a midline point, and repeat again. Minimum, midline, maximum, I think that's plenty. Okay, so we can sketch in here. We have several more cycles of this graph. Um, one neat thing to see is to look between zero and two pi. So I'm gonna trace the graph right there. And notice that we have half of a cycle that happens between zero and two pi. Now, because of the phase shift here, uh, it looks a little bit strange in terms of which half of a cycle it is. Um, but nonetheless, we can see that it is half of a cycle. It just had a, a strange starting point. Um, but that's pretty neat to see. Um, so this is how you get a nice graph of four sine one half x plus pi over two plus one. Graphing with shifts definitely takes some practice. Um, there are several links in the video description so you can get to more examples of sine with shifts very easily. Um, and you'll also find links for some examples on graphing other trig functions. So thanks for watching and good luck.